A Boy Called Bat, Chapter 14, Sleeping Arrangements. I want to sleep on the couch next to Thor. No, Bat, you need to sleep in your own bed, said Mom. Then I want Thor to sleep in bed with me. You can't sleep with the skunk, Bat. What if you rolled over in the night and crushed him? I would never do that, Bat said. He never would. Bat, honey, the skunk. Thor, Bat interrupted. His name is Thor. Mom rubbed her forehead. Fine, she said. Thor. Thor can't sleep in your bed. Thor is a wild animal. Wild animals don't sleep in beds. But in the wild, Thor wouldn't sleep alone, Bat argued. He would sleep in a pile with all his brothers and sisters, all cuddled up. I'm glad people don't sleep like skunks, Janie said. Her hair was damp from the shower, and she was wearing her favorite pajamas, the ones with all the unicorns. Each unicorn was doing something different. One rocked out with a guitar, another was reading a book. Another one wore a chef's hat and was flipping eggs in a pan. The only thing they had in common was that they were all unicorns. Janie, did you know that a herd of unicorns is called a blessing? Bat asked. Yes, Bat, of course I know that. Every time I wear these pajamas, you tell me that. I didn't know if you remembered, Bat said. You're not the only one who remembers things, Bat, said Janie. Then she stomped off to her room. Bat turned back to Mom. Please, he begged. No, said Mom in her firm voice. But Bat knew Mom's firm voice. Sometimes, if he pushed hard enough, he could change it into her soft voice. The one that let him have his way. I could be one of the, I could be the one to feed him. And you could sleep all night, Bat said. I know how to do it. Who do you think took care of you when you were a baby and had to eat every two hours, Bat? Mom asked. I took care of you and Janie. I took, I can take care of one little skunk. If you let me help, Bat said, bargaining now, I'll promise to scrape all the extra food off my plate from now on and put it in the dishwasher from dinner. Mom smiled. I thought it was too gross to look at leftover food stuck to a plate. It is too gross, Bat said, but I'll do it anyway, even if it made him gag. Even if it made him throw up. Besides, Bat said, I helped Thor go to the bathroom after he finished eating. If I can do that, I can do other gross things. Mom had taught Bat that baby skunks don't know how to go to the bathroom on their own when they are little babies. And if they don't pee and poop, they can die. In nature, the mother would help them learn. But since Thor was an orphan, every time he drank his formula, Someone had to hold him up and rub his bottom with a wet cotton swab until he pooped and peed. At school, Bat had been helping to clean up baby cakes and closure for a while now, and poop and pee were just part of having an animal. I'll tell you what, little Bat, Mom said, and her voice was softer now. Thor has to sleep in his enclosure. I'm going to take care of him during the night, but you can be in charge of his daytime feedings when we are home. And tomorrow, after school, instead of staying home with Janie, how about you come by the clinic? I'm going to weigh and measure Thor to make sure he's getting enough to eat and you can help. Okay, said Bat, for now. But when Thor gets bigger, big enough that I couldn't squish him in bed, let's revisit this conversation. That was something Mom said when she wanted Bat to know they weren't done talking about something. And Bat wanted Mom to know that he wasn't giving up on sleeping with Thor. Mom laughed. You drive a hard bargain, she said, and don't think I'm going to forget about the dishes. Chapter 15. Jerry Drago. Later, in his room when he was supposed to be sleeping, Bat climbed out of bed and pulled up his animal encyclopedia from the shelf. He flipped to the S section and found the page labeled skunk. At the top of the page was a glossy picture of a large black and white skunk nosing around a patch of dirt in the background. In the background, there was a picture of hundreds of white and yellow daisies. Below the picture were a bunch of questions and answers about skunks. Why do skunks spray? Skunks spray an oily liquid from glands underneath their tails as a defense. Their spray doesn't cause any real damage, but boy is it stinky. 
A skunk smell can be detected by a human from a mile away. Where do skunks live? Skunks can make many places their home. Abandoned burrows, constructed by other animals, a hollow log, even underneath your house. What are skunks predators? Lots of mammals, including red foxes, coyotes, and domestic dogs, will attack a skunk if they get hungry enough, though only as a last resort because it's difficult to attack a skunk without a smell or reminder of it. But aerial predators, such as large birds like owls, don't care so much about the scent. For one thing, it's hard for a skunk to spray at an attacker from the sky. For another, many birds of prey have little to no sense of smell. Finally, back up to the last and most important question. Do skunks make good pets? Skunks are wild animals, and wild animals belong in the wild. But according to the world skunk expert, Dr. Jerry Dragu, head of the Dragu Institute for the Betterment of Skunks and Skunks Reproductions, Reputations, while skunks in general do not make good pets, what makes a good pet is a good pet caretaker. That closed the book. He put it back on the shelf, right where he always put it, next to his Lego pyramid. Dr. Jerry Dragu, world skunk expert. That liked the name. He liked doctors because they usually knew lots of useful things. He liked the name Jerry because it was the same as that funny mouse on the old cartoons. One who always outsmarted the cat. And Dragu reminded him of Dragon. Of course, there was probably no such thing as dragons, but there might be. Dr. Jerry Dragu. That was someone Bat would like to meet. Chapter 16. Correspondence. The next day, when it was time for recess, Israel stopped at Bat's desk instead of going outside with the rest of the class and asked, Hey, Bat, do you want to play Foursquare or something? No, said Bat. He was still sitting at his desk. Do you want to play Foursquare? No, I don't want to play anything, Bat answered. All the other kids had left the classroom, and Bat really wanted Israel to leave too, so he could talk to Mr. Grayson in private. But Israel kept standing there like he was waiting for something. Well, do you want to go outside and just not play anything? No, I don't. Israel stood next to the desk for a moment longer, sort of smiling like he was waiting for Bat to say something more. But what could he be waiting for Bat to say. In his head, Bat threw, ran through a list of things that he was supposed to remember to say to people. Excuse me, I'm sorry, please, may I, thank you. Thank you, said Bat. Um, okay, said Israel, and he shrugged. And then finally he left. After Israel was gone, Bat went up to Mr. Grayson's desk. Mr. Grayson had a stack of their current events assignments in front of him and he was making comments on each one in a green felt-tipped pen. Mr. Grayson, Bat said, I need your help. Mr. Grayson put the cap on his pen and set it down. I'm all ears, he said. That was a funny expression. And for a second, Mr. Bat, pic Bat pictured Mr. Grayson made entirely of ears, with ears for eyes, an ear for a nose, and two tiny rows of little ears for teeth. Well said Bat, let me tell you everything about Thor. And then Bat told Mr. Grayson everything about the skunk kit, about how mom had brought him home after his mother had died, about how he drank puppy formula because there's no skunk formula, about how he went to the bathroom and how he needed to eat every two hours. And when mom first brought him home, he was almost all pink, but now his black fur was starting to grow in. And most of all, how Bat loved him. He sounds pretty great, Mr. Grayson said. Yes, said Bat. He's more than pretty great. He is all the way great. So how can I help you, Bat? There's a world skunk expert named Dr. Jerry Dragu, and I want to ask his advice about something. It's important. Okay, said Mr. Grayson. He pushed the stack of papers to one side and pulled up his laptop from his satchel. He opened it and logged on. That was one of the great things about Doc, Mr. Grayson. If you asked him for help, he just helped without a lot of annoying questions. There's only one Dr. Jerry Dragu, said Mr. Grayson. He's a professor at a university. We can write him an email if you want. 
That's his email address right there. Could it really be this easy? Could Bat just really write to the skunk expert? Bat liked to send emails. He liked to send emails every month to his grandmother who lived in Idaho because he hated talking on the phone. Emails gave you time to think. Okay, said Bat. What do you want to say? I can type it for you, Mr. Grayson clicked on his email icon and typed in the address. That's all right, said Bat. I like to type. Mr. Grayson let Bat sit in his chair. Bat typed, Dear Mr. Derry Drago. Mr. Grayson said, You can't just write Dear Dr. Drago. People don't usually use a person's first and last name when they start a letter. People usually don't have a cool name like Dr. Jerry Dragu, Bat said. Mr. Grayson laughed. Can't argue with that. Bat went on. My mom brought home a baby skunk. She is a vet and had to help him be born. His mother died, but she didn't have any diseases and neither does he. His name is Thor. I want to keep him as a pet because I know I can be a good pet caretaker. Even if I can't keep him forever, I want to at least keep him until he goes back home to the wild, not give him to the skunk rescue people. Please write back and say I can so I can tell my mom that a world skunk expert says yes. Then she will probably let me keep him. Is that okay? Bat asked. Mr. Grayson didn't answer right away, so Bat turned around to look at him. Mr. Grayson's face was squinched up like he was trying not to laugh, or maybe like he was going to cry. Mr. Grayson, Bat asked, what's wrong? Nothing is wrong, Bat. That's a very nice email. I will be interested to hear what Mr. Dra what Dr. Dragu says. Me too, said Bat. At the end of the email, he typed, sincerely, Bixby Alexander Tam. People call me Bat.